so i will cover um, pilocytic some of the circumscribed tumors huh? and the most common being the pilocytic astrocytoma so this is uh, uh, the pilocytic astrocytoma are known for almost 70 years who grade 1 tumor with more than 10 year survival in 90% of cases and wherever uh, the survival is uh, not so good is because of the location from where uh, it was not easy to uh, completely excise this tumor and this uh, pilocytic astrocytoma it accounts for almost 5% of all the gliomas but it is the most common glioma of children male are slightly more affected than female this is the most frequent brain tumor be, uh, uh, below the 19 years of age and uh, the most common between 5 to 14 years second most common between 0 to 4 years of age and 15 to 19 years but this is reported um, at any age and in anywhere in the um, cns the most common being cerebellum where it accounts for almost 50 or uh, 42% of the uh, cases the sub supratentorial compartment accounts for 36% optic pathway and hypothalamus accounts for 9% brain stem another 9% and spinal cord uh, 2% in children the cerebellar uh, pilocytic astrocytoma uh, or the cerebellum is the most common site for uh, uh, pilocytic astrocytoma and accounts for 67% of the uh, pilocytic astrocytomas uh, in children occur in the cerebellum supratentorial compartment uh, is rarely involved in children or the pilocytic astrocytoma uh, occurring in the supratentorial compartment in children is rare in adults involvement of involvement of cerebellum and supratentorial compartment is almost equal it sometimes involve the whole of the spinal cord and this is called holo cord pilocytic astrocytoma the multiple tumors and tumors of the optic tract are most often associated with neurofibromatosis type 1 the supratentorial and the spinal cord pilocytic astrocytomas are more often seen in adults at 10 to 20% are aggressive and suffer from recurrences even after complete excision the aggressive tumors occur more often in adults than in children the adult 5 year survival of uh, uh, adults with pilocytic astrocytoma the 5 year survival is only 52% in contrast to children where the survival is more than 90% this is um, the the it is insidious due to slow growth and uh, uh, the cerebellar tumors uh, uh, symptoms include ataxia cranial nerve de defect signs of increase in intracranial tension and optic pathway um uh, tumors they present with visual disturbances hypothalamic tumors present with endocrine syndromes diabetes insipidus precocious puberty electrolyte disturbances and dynencephalic syndrome ms emaciation hyperkinesis irritability and accelerated growth these are the different signs and symptoms with which patients with pilocytic astrocytoma present on radiology they are well defined 
राउंड ओवर लीजन सिस्टिक विद म्यूरल नॉड्यूल ऑप्टिक नर्व शोज फ्यूसीफॉर्म मासिस सेरिबेलर ट्यूमर टेंड टू बी सॉलिड एंड कैन बी इनफिल्ट्रेटिव सो दीज आर दिस इज अरिबेलर ट्यूमर विच इज सॉलिड एंड दिस इज अ क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन दैट इज अस्ट विद म्यूरल नॉड्यूल अगेन हियर अगेन इट इज अस्टिक मैथ विद अ म्यूरल नॉड्यूल and here it is a um, um, solid tumor and showing some infiltration and this is a tumor with the which is showing ring enhancement so pilocytic astrocytoma on radiology also can be quite confusing it can be very characteristic in a uh or uh, in its morphology but it can be it is uh, uh, many times um uh, said uh, radiologically diagnosed as high grade um tumor because of the enhancement it shows because of the rich vascularity that this tumor has and in the uh, in the spine also it can show cystic tum uh, tumor and it can be it can involve the whole of the uh, spinal cord as on radiology that it shows a very variable uh, morphology even on um, pathology also it shows a uh, variable morphology and uh, macro macroscopically it is soft to well defined cystic mass it can have it can have calcium and hemosiderin deposits it shows leptomeningeal involvement which is rarely can be extensive very rarely uh, pilocytic astrocytoma can present with extensive leptomeningeal involvement without the parenchymal involvement so and so called um, primary leptomeningeal gliomatosis so this is uh, the tumor in the cerebellum where it is a uh, cystic tumor with a solid nodule here again a solid well circumscribed tumor here again a cyst with a mural nodule here again it is a cystic tumor with solid component around it this is the mural nodule and this is the cyst and this is a cerebellar tumor so that that was the gross which uh, we don't see very often now because um, we don't get to have a top c of a uh, uh, patient with pilocytic astrocytoma so often but in if you have ever visit uh, i don't know whether aims has a museum now but it used to have a many example of this tumor in their museum and uh, on um, microscopy pilocytic astrocytoma is a tumor of low to moderate cellularity with compact densely fibrillated area which are which is rich in rosenthal fibers consisting of cells with long bipolar hair like processes and elongated bland nuclei admixed with loosely textured areas composed of round to oval nuclei with multiple cyst with mucoid background this area has eosinophilic granular bodies so a cystic structure uh, which shows uh, you can see this vasculature 
you can see this vasculature, this tumor is showing, this vasculature, almost, this is a very characteristic feature of pilocytic astrocytoma. This is low power. So what you are seeing is a moderate to low cellularity and with a rich vascularity. You know, there's bunches of blood vessels here. Again, these are all blood vessels. These are all blood vessels, blood vessels and a low to moderate cellularity. Here, some of the blood vessels are really uh, dilated. What strikes you uh, in a classical pilocytic uh, astrocytoma is the rich vascularity, which results in it uh, con contrast enhancement that you see on radiology. Here again, you can see this rich vascularity and in between you see these low cellular uh, or moderately cellular tumor islands and what you get, see is this vascularity. Here again, and this, this in between is the tumor. Huh? This is the tumor and this type of vascularity uh, is very characteristic. Here again, another example, you have some loose areas and some spindle cell cells and some polygonal cells in a loose cysts. These are all microcysts in the tumor. Again, this is these are the blood vessels, these are little cellular areas, a lot of the spindle cell tumor uh, or the Pyloid cells, as we call them. And you will see the vascularity here again. And you have uh, low cellularity and the cells are showing some tumor giant cells or pleomorphic cells with a lot of these spindle cells are seen. And in some areas, the cells can be very polygonal or these are looking like an ordinary um, um, like a grade 2 astrocytoma like area, you know, fibrillary background with these oval nuclei, some of them having a distinct nucleolus. This is a cellular area, again, tumor giant cells, spindle cells, rich vascularity. These are different morphological variation of pilocytic astrocytoma that you see. These are different cases. Huh? Here, the cellularity is more and you can see many more large nuclei. Uh, here, you can see one mitosis. So, occasional mitosis can be seen in a pilocytic astrocytoma. So here it is the, the fibrillary background is more and what you see are these pink bodies. Can you see these eosinophilic pink bodies? These are all uh, um, EGBs. Here is one Rosenthal fiber and these are EGBs. Lot of these spindle cells, these are, this is a classical pyloid cell that you are seeing. And this is this is full of pyloid cells, and these are all these are all EGBs, eosinophilic granular bodies. This is a CD thirty four uh, staining on uh, pilocytic astrocytoma to show you the rich vascularity that this tumor has, and this is um, an an area you know you will find them as garland like you know they are such rich vascularity, bunches of blood vessel, thin wall, hyalinized, uh, uh, all type of blood vessels can be seen in a pilocytic astrocytoma. So this is a very a pink area in a pilocytic astrocytoma. And this picture also shows you this is the 
adjacent brain parenchyma and you can see that this is a very circumscribed tumor this is a circumscribed tumor this is the normal parenchyma and uh, uh, the tumor nodule is very well circumscribed so this pink area is very rich in rosenthal fibers i will show you how and here this is almost looking like an oligodendroglioma clear cells so pilocytic astrocytoma uh, is a differential of oligodendroglioma so this is another area which is looking like uh, oligodendroglioma and this area is uh, is very densely pink uh, made up of all uh, of uh, of the um, pyloid cells and on high power this is full of uh, rosenthal fibers Hmm. These are all rosenthal. This is just a bundle of rosenthal fibers. Which are so these are different variation of pilocytic astrocytoma that are that is seen. And this area, it is look. You can see all these microcysts, and you see these oval cells with the, um, some eosinophilic granular bodies, but. Uh, this is a, said to be the loose area. That was the, this was the compact area and this is the loose area. So in this picture, you see both type of areas, the loose areas with microcyst uh, and the compact area, which is rich in Rosenthal fibers. So again, uh, similar here, the compact, compact area is like a strip and this area is made up of all these microcysts and uh, the astrocytic cells uh, uh, or no, of low cellularity area. When you get uh, beds, uh, usually in CNS biopsies, uh, you get multiple beds where uh, you cannot, you don't have the topography or of the tumor, but in the multiple bits, what you can see in pilocytic astrocytoma, like in this case, you see low cellular areas and high cellular areas. And here they are made up of clear cells. And then in these, uh, you can see this vasculature here is a bunch of uh, blood vessel, but here you can see this, um, um, uh, what I always call a garland-like vasculature. These are the features that you must observe uh, while examining the mm, tumor. And this is again um, uh, the high power of, the, uh, of this. Huh? And you see that this is made up of all these pyloid cells and some oval cells and some eosinophilic granular bodies and some Rosenthal fibers. Huh? This is EGB, this is Rosenthal fiber, another Rosenthal fiber. This is of low cellularity, huh? but you can see uh, EGB, Rosenthal fiber, some eosinophilic bodies, pyloid cells, you know, these are the pyloid cells. You can see the vasculature. You see thick walled, thick walled, thin walled, all type of blood vessels. Blood vessels form a very prominent component in a pyelocytic astrocytoma. This is the compact area. Uh, again, you can see these uh, spindle cells and these Rosenthal fibers and EGBs. These are the different uh, morph uh, histomorphology of pilocytic astrocytoma that you see. Huh? High power of the same, these are the Rosenthal fibers and EGBs. can see the pyloid cells, you know, these here like processes that you are seeing. 
they can sometimes the blood vessels are so highly nized and they are calcified and the tumor shows lot of calcification the blood vessels are highly nized and calcified and you can even see some of my bodies here again this is looking like the area is almost looking like oligodendroglioma uh, with the highly nized blood vessels with lot of calcification so this is again a different area uh, of pilocytic astrocytoma here you can see lot of microcysts and calcification this is these are the areas of the same tumor this is the tumor which is showing calcification some oligodendroglial like areas and different areas you are seeing microcysts with calcification so many cysts you are seeing and then in the other area of the same tumor you can see the vgbs this is more densely cellular again uh, showing uh, poly uh, these oval uh, astrocytic cells with edbs and rosenthal fibers hmm. these are all pyloid cells so this is the cerebellum hmm? this is the cerebellum and this is the tumor so you can see that the tumor is very well is circumscribed it, it does not infiltrate this is another you can see these vasculature all these blood vessels here again this is these are the blood vessel blood vessels this is the densely cellular area and these are the loose areas less cellular area but what if what is very obvious here is this rich vascularity the tumor has this is the densely cellular area and this is again the um the pyloid area which is rich in rosenthal fibers rosenthal fibers are not diagnostic they can be seen in many conditions um this can be seen in reactive processes and it can be, they can be seen in other tumors also but in pilocytic astrocytoma they do form a prom, uh, they do form a significant uh, feature these are the rosenthal fibers again here all these are rosenthal fibers these you now they can be of different shape sizes so here you can see all these cysts all these cysts with filled with this pink material and here if you look this is not this morpho morphologically not different from grade 2 astrocytoma but it is the different areas uh, of the tumor which which will give you a clue to the diagnosis so you must always don't ever save any bit of tissue sent to you for uh, examination process every bit only then you will uh, uh, be able to see the heterogeneity and maybe get the clue to the diagnosis here again you can see that this is a very organoid uh, pattern this vasculature is giving to the tumor sometime the pyloid areas are form a nodule in midst of the 
the cell uh, the loose area which is which shows a lot of these micro cysts small small cysts and this is a, a um, pyloid area which is rich in uh, uh, pink fibers and these are the rosenthal fibers and egbs and here it is almost looking like a oligodendro glioma which also can show you microcyst like seen in this case again clear cells very clear cells almost looking like uh, or looking like uh, oligodendroglioma but in this clear cell you see a nodule which is so rich in these pink fibers and these uh, um, the rosenthal fibers and also see that even though they are clear cells see the difference in the vasculature of this tumor then what you see in a oligodendroglioma and again see this type of vasculature this is if you don't see these vas this vasculature you will mistake this as a astrocytoma and but this is this garland type of vasculature uh gives it away that oh maybe you are not looking at grade 2 tumor you are looking at a uh, pilocytic astrocytoma you these are the microcyst you are looking at and you again look at the vasculature another feature of pilocytic astrocytoma is that they give a very strong dfap positivity and see all the fibers are strongly positive for gfap the key index is low you can only see in this whole field one darkly brown staining nuclei so the spindle cell or the bipolar cells are strongly gfap positive and loose areas are less strongly gfap positive but overall the pilocytic astrocytoma gives a very strong gfap positivity some areas are morphologically similar to oligodendrogliomas sometime the oligodendroglial glial like areas may predominate in a tumor cells with pleomorphic nuclei often multinucleated new uh, cells may also occur and generally are found in the loose microcystic areas a uh, rare mitosis is acceptable in a pilocytic astrocytoma but any notable mitotic activity should warrant the consideration of other gliomas a key index or uh, up to 4% can is allowed in pilocytic astrocytoma anything more should make you look for alternative diagnosis microvascular proliferation resulting in thick walled hyalinized or uh, glomeruloid vessels is also can be seen in uh, pilocytic astrocytoma infarct like necrosis can occur in pilocytic astrocytoma Uh, while these findings are compatible with pilocytic astrocytoma but sometimes they make distinction from other gliomas very difficult sometimes cerebellar tumor show a diffuse growth pattern and uh, there can be entrapped neurons and astrocytic cells making the diagnosis difficult and uh, you mistake them for ganglioglioma microscopic infiltration of uh, leptomeninges is frequently seen especially in cerebellar and optic nerve tumors and is not an ominous sign so So, sometime the pilocytic astrocytoma which is a grade 1 tumor rarely can show histological features of anaplasia 
cases of malignant transformation are rare but reported mainly post radiotherapy case cases report case reports of malignant transformation without prior therapy are also documented but are rare the mayo clinic eh, this is an old an our uh, case study or report where they published 34 uh, cases of pilocytic astrocytoma with anaplastic features the frequency of anaplasia was very low 0.6% among all the pilocytic astrocytoma operated at mayo clinic and 1.8% among all the consultation that they received 24 of the 34 cases had either coexistent or a precursor typical pa documented by biopsy 10 of the 34 cases showed uh, typical pilocytic features in otherwise an anaplastic astrocytoma four of the 34 cases received rt and eight of the 34 were associated with nf1 four histological features of anaplasia are identified pilocytic like with the classical bipolar cells with rosenthal fibers with micro cells with eosinophilic granular bodies but with brisk mitotic activity and hypercellularity poorly differentiated small cell areas epithelioid or rhabdoid areas cases resembling classic diffusely infiltrative astrocytoma the presence of anaplastic features was associated with decreased survival when compared to a typical pilocytic astrocytoma given the difficulty and subjectivity in making the diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma with anaplastic features based solely on morphology it is desirable that relevant molecular marker whenever available should be used so the second um, circumscribed tumor is the pilomyxoid astrocytoma variant the most common site is hypothalamic or uh, chiasmatic area in very young children composed of monomorphous population of bipolar cells which are immersed in a myxoid mucoid background and variable angiocentric arrangement the rosenthal fibers and egbs are absent and these cells show strong gfap positivity focal pilomyxoid areas are seen in uh, pilocytic astrocytoma some of the pilomyxoid astrocytoma have recurred as pilocytic astrocytoma suggesting a possibility that they may represent an early stage in the development of pilocytic astrocytoma some of the pilomyxoid astrocytoma do show the braf uh, fusion um, uh, braf fusion gene so this was the who picture but let's see our own morphology so this is a loose myxoid matrix in which you can see these spindle cells and then you see these blood vessels and you see that the spindle cells are arranged around these blood vessels they usually the pil pilomyxoid is a very faintly sometimes it is not even visible on the slide Uh, you just see a blue tinge on the slide and then because this is a very myxoid tumor and you see these blood vessels where and the cellularity is more around the blood vessels huh? you see the high power of the same you see the blood uh, the spindle cells are arranged around these blood vessels and they have a very characteristic uh, they radiate from the blood vessel here again here and they are so strongly positive for gfap even the single single each cell is 
strongly positive for GFAP. And such this is why maintain a key is so low. So pyelomyxoid astrocytoma until 2008 only well documented association with NF1 syndrome. Now it shows it has been shown to have KRAS and P10 mutations, polysomies of chromosome 5, 6, 7, 11, 15, and 20, and identification of Kia 1549 with BRAF fusion gene is seen in more than 70% of uh, pilocytic astrocytoma, especially occurring in cerebellum. I think this part I will skip because Dr. Anila had done this in detail in her lecture. BRAF V600E mutation is also is seen in uh, py uh, pilocytic astrocytoma, but in a small number of cases, only in 10%. All this she did in her lecture. So, pilocytic astrocytoma has an excellent prognosis of 10 year survival in more than 90% of uh, cases. Prognosis of hypothalamic and chiasmatic pilocytic astrocytoma and tumors where complete excision is not, cannot be achieved, have less favorable prognosis and, and rare pilocytic astrocytoma with extensive leptomeningeal involvement has poorer prognosis. Surgery followed by radiotherapy when complete excision could not be achieved is recommended. Chemotherapy may also be given in such situation. Pilocytic astrocytoma very seldom progresses to more malignant form even after repeated recurrences and um, it maintains the WHO grade 1. However, small number of cases with malignant transformations have been documented. Clinical trials with inhibitors of BRAF or target further, uh, further down the MAP kinase pathway have been tried. Initial studies with BRAF inhibitors have been published and they have demonstrated our incomplete understanding of the way the inhibitors affect the com uh, component of MAP kinase pathway. Sorafenib uh, treatment of a small number of patients produce unexpected acceleration of the tumor growth irrespective of presence or absence of NF1 mutation. And Vemrafenib related BRAF inhibitors has also resulted in paradoxical activation of MAP kinase pathways in cells expressing Kia1549 BRAF fusion protein. These therapies do appear to relatively effectively inhibit some types of tumors with BRAF V600E mutations, but not the Kia fusion. So the differential diagnostic issues with pilocytic astrocytoma, the classic form and the typical location of pilocytic astrocytoma can hardly be confused with any other CNS tumor. There are a number of situations when making a diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma can be challenging. Finding Kia 1549 bra fusion mutation and absence of other changes in association of appropriate morphological feature is supportive of the diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma. Low grade lesions, uh, the differential diagnosis include ganglioglioma, pleomorphic xenthoestrocytoma, oligodendroglioma, Diffuse astrocytoma, D-net, rosette-forming rosette glioneuronal tumor of the fourth ventricle and the pyloid gliosis. And the high-grade uh, gliomas also come into the differential diagnosis, especially in the older individuals and that is the 
GBM and the anaplastic oligo or uh, or anaplastic astrocytoma. Now we don't have. This is my old lecture, so this is the oligo astrocytoma is out now. The IHC in the differential diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma. GFAP diffuse strong positivity in pilocytic astrocytoma. Oligodendroglioma, uh, the GFAP shows a perinuclear positivity or a weak positivity. Sometimes it is patchy positivity. GBM again, the GFAP shows a patchy positivity. Immunoexpression decreases in, in GBM with increase in the grade. In combination with new N and CD34, one can differentiate pilocytic astrocytoma from ganglioglioma. And key 67, pilocytic astrocytoma is usually 1% or less and the maximum that we allow is 4%. So the differential of pilocytic astrocytoma, uh, one of the differential is ganglioglioma, which is a grade one glioneuronal tumor. Grade one glioneuronal tumor composed of dysmorphic frequently multinucleate ganglion cells with glial component. Biopsy may show areas poor in ganglion cells and truly ganglion cell poor ganglioglioma are known. The temporal lobe is the most frequent site of uh, ganglioglioma, whereas cerebellum is the frequent site for pilocytic astrocytoma. However, pilocytic astrocytoma can occur anywhere in the CNS. Pilocytic astrocytoma is uncommon in temporal lobe and sometimes Ganglioglioma has been misdiagnosed as pilocytic astrocytoma. Sometimes pilocytic astrocytoma has entrapped neurons and they may result in the misdiagnosis of ganglioglioma. Use of strict criteria and CD34 and new N antibodies help us in differential diagnosis of ganglioglioma from pilocytic astrocytoma. So this is one case where you see uh, multiple beds. You at this power you can see uh, a blood vessel with lymphocytic infiltrate. You see a lot of calcification in the tumor. A lot of calcification. You can see um, these lymphocytic infiltrate. You see, these are the ganglion cells, ganglion cells, and these are the astrocytic cells. These are the ganglion cells, Mul uh, binucleated ganglion cell. And calcification, then you can see a neuron which is calcified. This is mu N. And all these ganglion cells are negative for new N. New N stains the normal neurons and not the neoplastic neuron. It does stain the neocyte of neurocytoma, but in ganglioglioma, the new N does not stain the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells are stained by CD34 which gives it is this feathery uh, staining. You see the uh, cytoplasm and you see these uh, uh, processes around them which are staining. This is the, uh, this is called feathery staining of neuron dysplastic or neoplastic neurons or ganglion cells. GFAP stains the
presence of glomeruloid vasculature and imaging uh, help in differential diagnosis. Is my voice clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Because uh, somehow I had a message here that my internet is unstable. So this is DNET. Mm, DNET, you can see that you have these very loose mixoid uh, stroma in which you can see these uh, oligo-like area. You can see these strands of uh, small nuclei. Here again, you can see these strands of small nuclei. And in between are these cells with pink cytoplasm. This is again, you can see um, very oligo-like area, thin vasculature in between are these uh, neuronal cells. You can see these are the, the thin vasculature, oligo-like nuclei. And in neuron, uh, these are the neuron cells. Floating neurons, we call them in DNET. These are the floating neurons. See this. Another differential of pilocytic astrocytoma is the rosette forming glioneuronal tumor. This is a rare uh, tumor which occurs in the fourth ventricle. So the site gives it away. It, is a, it occurs in the young adults and it shows features resembling uh, pilocytic astrocytoma, but they do not have this fusion gene. So this is uh, one of the, the, again, the WHO, but I will show you my own case. So this is a 25-year-old male who had headache and seizure, cystic lesion involving the temporal lobe near the fourth ventricle, huh? near the fourth ventricle with peripheral uh, enhancement. And this is the picture. It, this is low power itself is a giveaway. You have these highline vasculature surrounded by these small cells. And uh, this is the higher power. And this is, uh, these cells are GFAP positive, IDH negative, ATRX is retained. And the, the cells in between these areas, these areas, the cells are mu N positive. So they show neuronal differentiation. And CD34 here highlights the dysplastic cells. That is, they show the, uh, the feathery degeneration. Key is the key is very low. And CD34 also highlights the blood vessels. So this is papillary glioneuronal tumor. This is again a WHO grade one. This uh, this. Morphology is very characteristic. So differential diagnosis from diffuse gliomas, low grade and high grade. Adult patients, diffuse gliomas, low grade or high grade, they occur in adult. They are supratentorial tumor having microvascular proliferation and or necrosis. Molecular tests are only way to differentiate for sure. Lack of IDH1 and IDH2 mutation, 1P19Q co-deletion and or presence of um, Kia fusion gene points towards pilocytic astrocytoma. Differential diagnosis from pyloid gliosis. This is a chronic gliosis characterized by dense refractile uh, with varying degree of cellularity and glial atypia and associated with Rosenthal fibers is very difficult to differentiate from 
monomorphous densely fibrillated pilocytic astrocytoma those areas if your biopsy consists of those dense areas which were rich in rosenthal fibers as i have shown you in some many of the pictures those areas can be very difficult to differentiate from pyloid gliosis and um, the this but you remember the pyloid gliosis is seen around the spinal cord uh, spinal cord ring long it long standing tumors like craniopharyngiomas spinal ependymomas and even i have cases uh, two cases uh, one was shared long time ago by my um, noida foot uh, uh, fotis um, uh, colleagues uh, showed is showing very intense uh, uh, um, reaction around the neurocytoma so the molecular finding are complex and the fact that some mutations and rearrangements recognized to date can occur in many of the tumor types in our current classification especially in tumors which are dif differential diagnosis of pilocytic astrocytoma in future we anticipate that specific pattern of multiple both positive and negative molecular findings will be will provide a definitive diagnostic biomarker pattern to diagnose uh, pilocytic astrocytoma in emerging era personalized medicine and targeted therapies classification becomes less important as the molecular finding in a particular case rather than a morphological grouping will determine the therapy so we must all learn molecular